In this video, we're going to talk about lysogenic viral replication. Lysogenic replication can also be called latent viral replication, and it occurs in bacteriophages as well as viruses that infect eukaryotic cells. The best way to think of a lysogenic or latent phase is as a dormant type of replication. In this replication, no new viruses are being made, but the viral genome is being carried within the infected host cell. Let's draw this out. Here we have a bacterial cell, and the bacteriophage is going to attach to that cell and inject its viral genome directly into the cytoplasm. I'm adding the bacterial genome to this cell because it's going to become important in a couple of more steps. Recall that in the lytic phase of viral replication, new copies of the phage genome are going to be made during the biosynthesis step, and the bacterial genome actually gets chopped up into little bitty pieces. After biosynthesis, where all of the new capsids and genomes are made, these capsids and genomes get assembled to make our new virions. And in the final step, that cell is lysed, the new bacteriophages can leave, and go on to start the process over again. The lysogenic cycle starts the same way, but is distinctly different once we get past the first few steps. Here we have our bacterial cell with its bacterial genome, and the bacteriophage genome within that cell. However, unlike the lytic phase where new virions are made, this viral genome instead is going to become integrated into the host bacterial DNA. That red bacteriophage DNA becomes a part of our blue bacterial genome. The integrated bacterial phage DNA is called a prophage, and when this happens in an animal virus, we call it a provirus. As that cell undergoes cell division, it's going to pass that copy of the prophage or provirus onto all of its daughter cells through vertical transmission. It's important to note that during this process, no new bacteriophage or no new virus is being made. Now let's zoom in and take a closer look at what happens in a cell that is undergoing a lysogenic infection. That infected bacterial cell can pass that prophage on for generations, but sometimes a process called reactivation occurs. When that bacteriophage gets reactivated, the prophage is actually excised from the bacterial genome. That means that it is cut out of the bacterial DNA and is now free phage genome there in the cytoplasm of the cell. And now that bacteriophage re-enters the lytic cycle of replication. And from here, everything occurs just like we've talked about before. New viral capsids and proteins are made, new viral genomes are synthesized, the two are assembled together into fully formed virions, and they eventually leave the bacterial cell by lysis. Now I've only drawn for you the lysogenic cycle in bacteriophages, but there are a number of human viruses that have a latent or a lysogenic phase themselves. The first example I'm gonna to talk to you about is HIV. Like with bacteriophage, HIV gets into the cell, into the cell nucleus, and integrates its genome into the host chromosome. We refer to this integrated piece of viral DNA as the provirus. A second really good example are the human herpes viruses. And these herpes viruses do things a little bit differently from HIV and bacteriophages. They do get into cells and they get their DNA into the cell nucleus. But rather than integrating with host DNA, the herpes viral genomes are maintained as extra chromosomal DNA called episomes. These episomes are generally bound to the host chromatin by viral proteins and that allows them to separate out to the different daughter cells during host cell replication and division. And the last important thing to know is that not all viruses have a latent or a lysogenic cycle. All of them have a lytic cycle but only a few of them undergo latency or lysogeny. At this point, you may be thinking, why do viruses and bacteriophage reactivate and leave the lysogenic cycle for the lytic cycle? And you know what? That's a really good question. The short answer is we don't really know why all viruses and bacteriophages reactivate. Scientists have determined that reactivation usually occurs in response to some sort of cellular damage or stress to the host cell. 
For example, exposure to UV light can cause reactivation of a number of lysogenic or latent viruses. Additionally, we know that in humans, viruses tend to reactivate in our bodies when we're under an enormous amount of stress. This is a really big area of research right now. And who knows, maybe one day you will find an answer to some of these questions.